let's take a look at the reading 13 study questions either study questions for the first part or the first reading from Sophocles is Oedipus Oedipus the king Oedipus Tyrannos Oedipus Rex King Oedipus however you want to I think that's the translation that Yates uses for this version uh, number one on page 371 Oedipus says but I will start afresh and make the dark things plain what does he mean I suppose he means just that he's going to solve this mystery of uh, what has happened that has brought this plague upon the city of Thebes and that um, he will save the day by finding out from the gods what, what the thing is that has brought this uh, misfortune upon the city. He's done it before. It's how he rose to be the tyrant, I guess, or king, however you want to characterize it. Of Thebes by solving the riddle of the Sphinx when he was a young man and showed up. Uh, so he's going to do it again. He will, he will start afresh. He'll do, you know, go back to the beginning and uh, resolve the mystery, which is, you know, of course, highly ironic because, of course, he's the cause of it all. On page 372, why does the Chorus say, for death is all the fashion now till even death be dead? I have no idea. I don't even know if that's a strictly uh, uh, correct translation from the Greek. Uh, Yeats, the great poet who translated this, didn't really know Greek. He did it with the help of somebody who did. And I think he took a lot of liberties uh, with the language. The story is the same, uh, but it's not exactly a... a, a uh, it's not a literal translation at all. I think he takes a lot of liberties. Um, well, of course, there's a, there's a plague and everything's dying in the city so death is all the fashion now that makes sense but till even death be dead i'm not really sure I'm kind of interested to see what you had to say number three Teresia says to oedipus you are your own enemy why well that's interesting i mean i don't think well Teresia. no Teresia. i was thinking it was creon no Teresia says to oedipus you're on your own enemy because you're the i know you're the murderer right oedipus you're the one who killed laos know it but gods know it so either you're your enemy because you're the one you're seeking who's the enemy or you're your own enemy because you're going to destroy yourself and I, I i think i favor the latter interpretation that is that oedipus doesn't realize that he's he's destroying himself that, that it's not Teresius or creon or anyone else who is his enemy he's his own enemy he's going to destroy himself by exposing himself to be the, as the murderer, and, uh, you know, as the incestuous husband of his own mother. He's progressively more terrible. Uh, number four, what does Creon mean uh, on page, I'm sorry, to put the page, when he asks, am I such a fool as to hunger after unprofitable honors? I mean, this is when Oedipus has accused Creon of plotting against him to take away the throne for himself. Uh, Creon is the brother of Oedipus's wife, Yocasta, so his brother-in-law. But of course, Yocasta is not only his wife, but is also his mother, so Creon is his uncle. doesn't know that yet, but... Uh, Creon is the second in command. <clears throat> As he says, um, you know, uh, this is ridiculous. Why would I want to take away your throne? I mean, I, I enjoy all of the... Uh, benefits of ruling because I, I advise you, but I don't have to take the heat and bear the responsibilities and the burden of actually being the ruler. So Creon is quite happy to stay in the background, he says, and not, um, why would he, he says, I don't want the throne. I've got a better position here as your advisor. Number five, what does Oedipus mean on page 383 when he asks, oh Zeus, what have you planned to do unto me? I had to look. I guess the, the important thing is uh, context um, right here. It's when he's talking to Yocasta, who is his wife and his mother. And she's describing um, the circumstances from years ago when her first husband, Laos, was killed. And I think it's here where Oedipus realizes the truth 
that is, uh, he realizes what has happened, that he that he's killed his own father, and by implication, obviously, married his own mother. It's when the, the true horror of his situation has uh, become clear to him for the first time. And he, doesn't, I would say he blames it on the gods, because there's not blame here. But he asks, almost like Job asked in the Bible, you know, why did you do this to me? Why, what have you planned? I mean, obviously this comes from the gods, this kind of fate. Uh, why, what have, you know, what have you done to me? Talking to the divine, the god Zeus. Uh, number six, why did the young Oedipus leave Corinth and what happened after he did? Well, he, he left Corinth because he heard the prophecy. He knew the prophecy, and he had heard from somebody that, um, you know, that he would uh, kill his father and marry his mother, and so he, he left to, to avoid that fate. This is my memory of it. And um, what happened after he did was, you know, he, he ran straight into that fate because he, you know, he ended up killing his, his biological father and um, marrying his biological mother. On page 386, number seven, the chorus sings, but should a man forget the holy images, the Delphian Sibyl's trance, and the world's navel stone, and not be punished for it, and seems most fortunate or even blessed perchance, why should we honor the gods or join the sacred dance? What are they getting at? What question are they asking? Um, that's a matter of interpretation and not easy. Um, it seems to me that the chorus is is saying well i mean if you can get away with murder um if you can get away with with all sorts of crimes and um you can ignore the gods then um why should we honor the gods it, it, it's a deeply troubling question i suppose um, and i think they're thinking about the the whole murder of laos the un punished one. Number eight, by page 395, Oedipus knows the truth about himself. What is that truth? Well, the truth is obvious, that he's murdered his father on the road, and that he's married his own mother and had children with her. Does he have reason to be ashamed of that truth? Well, I mean, that's just, I, I, I consider that maybe the central question. I mean, if you kill your father and uh, sleep with your mother, that's usually shameful. And uh, you know, there's no two, no, no two uh, ways about it. But if you do it unknowingly, if you do it without intending to, are you still, should you still be ashamed? Uh, by the end of the play, Oedipus is destroyed. Oedipus is, uh, he, he's, he's a shell. Um, he has no future. Uh, he's uh, ostracized, he's, he's unclean. He's impure. I mean, it's the idea. But if the actions that led to that state being devastated are not chosen by you, I mean, are you, are you still liable for them? Should you still be punished for them? That's the maybe the question that I think is the main interest of the play. So I, I, I don't have an answer to it. I, I don't think there is an answer to it. 